Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Little Guardsmen. We're continuing exactly after the wedding. So there was like an arrow that shot through the whole chapel or wherever they got married. And then they said that we are going to declare war. So we are about to see what that's all about right now. But thank you all so much for the support on the series. It really does mean a lot when I enjoy a game a lot and you all just want to see the next part. It just makes me want to play this even more. So I appreciate the support. But other than that, we're about to start right now. If you guys cool day down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. The sprawl news about the war. On the front lines, our homegrown heroes are holding toe to toe against the pungent Patradians. I feel like I should be saluting or something like. But back in the barracks, folks from home and away are signing up to do their part. You might even find the odd Patradian joining our ranks to fight against their own. Go get them, soldier. Those are some dumbass looking and horses. Get them once for me. Those Talk are some people. Talk to your little gotcha operator about how you can join the Sprawl Army today. Join the Sprawl Army today. I'm too old to join the army, so get your freaking stanky finger out of my face. The king was pointing at me with that sausage finger. Let me drink some of this Celsius, though. Any some questions? Energy. About Did what? Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. You mean the propaganda video? You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. <laughs> Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. So we started off by just deciding if people could go through the gates. Then we had to plan the freaking royal wedding. Now I have arrows in my bulletin board and I have to make the best army possible. I thought my so job much was pressure to decide who for to this let 12 year old girl. Gate. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you guardsmen. Not anymore. We are dancing on a knife's edge here. So now you have to maintain a 2.5-star average, or it's game over. 2.5? That's preschool shit. I'm oh, already three-star in these and if you don't draft hosts. the right people, we could lose the war. Also, game over. Wait, figuratively or literally? Both. Oh my god. Awkward pause. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal of your first plan. I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Damn. Okay, so we have to get a 2.5 or it's game over. It's hasta la vista, baby. But the royal right says, after months of the siege, the sprawl's resources, namely its food stores, have reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you are to contact either myself or Lieutenant Stryker. Failure to contact leadership will be reflected in your star ranking, Ash. Related, any individuals or groups coming from outside the sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with one item, the decision to admit anyone who fits this description should be run by either Ash or me, Stryker again. Best of luck to those responsible for drafting individuals for service on the front lines. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye. And although it may seem like sending more people to the fray is the right idea, that is not always the case. Hey, guard us. I'm breaking in a new assistant down here in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you get him when you call Malcolm. Do we trust Malcolm, everybody? Is Malcolm like that? Is he him? Is he Malk him? I don't know. But I think I need some truth sprays, and I might need some whips. I need to know if they're army strong. So let's do that. Let's get at least three of the truth sprays. One of the whip for sure. I'm not playing this time. Like, we really on some 50 shades of army of one type shit. Uh, decoder ring. Do I think I need that? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And then we'll do one of these. And last but not least, metal detector. All right, everybody. Wish me luck. This might not be the easiest thing. 2.5 star rating? That's kind of crazy. I know I was acting all confident, but I'm confident Excuse that me, this dude is not Is this him. the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on? I don't know about all that, everybody. I don't know. It right is. off the bat. Why? Do you know someone who's looking to sign up? Sure do, ma'am. His name is Elmer John, and you're looking at him. I'm talking about me, ma'am. Yeah, I got that. 
Let's talk to him real quick. Let's see what's up. Now, what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. My one and only love, Glory Ann. Glory Ann? She bad? I guess I'll trust that. That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. I don't know. Maybe Heartbreak will make a great soldier out of this guy. But let me just refer back to this thing. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye. And although it may seem like sending more people to the fray is the right idea, that is not always the case, Striker. Let me give Striker a call. Let me see if she's up. And let's see if she yes, will we need help us with this guy. We can get out there. But I can't justify taking any more emotionally conflicted soldiers onto the battlefield. Scan this guy for any evidence that he's got a strong enough stomach for what he's about to get into. Oh, I understand. I know what you're talking about. Time to freaking bring this whip out. What? Whoa. He took that. Yeah. What'd you do that for? Oh, no, he didn't. If you think that's scary, just wait until you find out what they got in store for you on the battlefield. Do you think it'll be scarier than that loud whip noise? You're not really the soldier type, are you, Elmer? No, ma'am. Never raised a fist in my life. But once I saw my sweetheart, Glory Ann, in the arms of that other man, my neighbor Bosco, fighting was the only thing I could think of. So you fought him? Are you crazy? He's so much bigger than me. I ran away to fight for and against people I don't really know. So Bosco blew out your girlfriend's back and then you ran away like a little bitch? I can't send somebody to the army that's taken that many L's. I gotta deny that. So we are gonna deny. We're signing the papers for you to go back home, buddy. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully I get a three-star rating. Because Elmer, you are not it. The only I thing that you I should can. be used In for is glue. Send you to the front, Elmer. Go home, find Glorianne, and talk to her. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I was making one of those, what do you call it, hasty decisions I always make. Yeah, I'll you go were thinking home emotionally. and see my Glory Ann, who I caught in the arms of another man, and I'll make the biggest apology banner anybody ever saw. Oy. What's an apology banner? Wait, he caught her with another man and he's gonna apologize? Ooh. It's the easiest way oh, to say fuck, you're I'm cringing. sorry. So long, man. <laughs> take care now. Glory Ann, I'm a coming. Oh, goodness gracious. I can't believe that, Elmer. I never want to see that dude again. Never, ever. Wait, did I get a ah, uh, five-star rating? I remember you, the miserable wretch who sought me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. I hope this dude's not thinking about joining the war. This dude looked like he fought in the Civil War. I remember you too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. Yeah. Yes, we have met. Okay, what do you want? It is my intention to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun or worse, sacked. Mr. Dunn just needs to hear my confirmation number and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich people friendly nation. Uh, let me doubt. What will happen to the BS without you? Most likely, BS will fall in one great lump. Dude looks Perhaps like he's enough on some people BS. will continue to buy into BS, but as far as I'm concerned, the people here were up to their necks in BS anyway. <laughs> we're still talking about the bank, right? He's like, what? The bank? Um, let me refer back to this again. Let me see. Best of luck to those becoming responsible for drafting individual. No, no, no. Any individuals or groups coming from outside the sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with one item, the decision to admit anyone. Let me see something, everybody. Let me use some truth spray. Let me spray that stank on his old ass face. And let's see what he says. Honestly, what does it all matter anyway? I've spent my entire life accumulating one of the largest fortunes in the sprawl, but what good is it without my darling whelp? If only I could speak with him again, I could leave all this money behind if it would get me back my whelp. Who's whelp? Can we talk to you about whelp you one more time? You can't the bank fail. We need that BS money to make sure the city doesn't fall. Well, you should have thought of that before convincing the princess to turn down that delightful Prince Phineas. 
Is there anything I can say to change your mind? Save the day, your mother, the goblins, the children. Welp? Is Welp your mom? Oh, come on. What would your mother think? Taking all of our family fortune away and leaving the poor to die in the streets? Mumsy would be so proud. Wow. All right. Well, I'm glad that your mom is looking up at you from wherever she is. I think I might need to rewind time, everybody. Who is Welp? What does Welp even mean? I can't even make a phone call. I feel like I should rewind time, everybody. Because I really, really don't want to get under 2.5 stars. So we're just gonna... I remember you, too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. I just remembered everybody. Yes, we have met. He was the dude that was trying to get into the freaking bank. And he had the Dobby-looking guy with him, which is at Malcolm's place in the dungeon. The new assistant. I this do remember this guy. This is the dungeon guy. of Malcolm the Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great! May I take a message? May I take Wait, your head, sir? Who is this? Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil! It's me, Welp! His name is Welp. I thought so. <laughs> Listen, Welp? there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Welp? Is it really you? It is, Your Grace. Welp, I never thought I'd see you again. Well, we are on the phone. How are you? Have you been treated poorly? No one ever treated me as poorly as you, sir. Aww, how sweet. I miss you, well. I miss you too, sir. Oh, God, just fuck already. Come, run away with me. We can leave this war behind us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. Whoa, am I in the middle of something? Oh, Welp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining life to you. What about your remaining money? Can I have some? I'll donate it to the poor. <laughs> Just kidding, but I won't <laughs> take it away with me today. Okay, I kind of like this guy. <laughs> Good enough. Get <laughs> in there and reunite an with your friend. Wow. How sweet. That's true love, everybody. If you didn't know what that interaction was, that was true love. True love conquers all. That's true love. Way to go, Cupid. I do what I do. I do what I do. Does that look like a heart? Damn, that's a perfect heart. Where is he? Where's that meek little slunk of a man? I have no idea what you're talking about. Did a hopelessly heartbroken fellow by the name of Elmer John come by this way? Spouting a crazy notion, like running off and joining the army? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's As coming over back fact, to apologize to you for Bosco blowing your back out. Oh, Elmer John, what have you done? Tell me, did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing? I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me to get as far away from that fool as possible. Uh, why? I take it you're Glory Ann. That's me, Glory Ann. The same Glory Ann that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like. And if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. What, you're gonna tell me that was your step cousin? Doubt. So what? You're sick of these wonk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation? Exactly! Hmm. Well, I don't want to admit you, because you're also thinking emotionally. You only want to join the army because you want to get away from Elmer, and that's definitely not something that the army needs, so bye-bye. Now, I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you apart. I understand. And I'm not doing this because I didn't draft him and I want you two to be together. I didn't do it for that reason. Understood. I'm doing this because I don't think you fully thought this through. I'm denying your recruitment into the army. I agree, Lil. I agree. I guess I was acting a little hot under the collar there for a minute. I should go home and talk things over with Elmer and... Wait. Now will you tell me? What happened to him? Did he get drafted into the war? No. 
I didn't send him to the front. I think you'll find he'll be waiting for you when you get home. Big ol' apology banner and all. Thank goodness! Why is Elmer gonna make the apology banner? After he caught you with another man in your arms? Or the other way around? I have no idea. The goblin approaches, whistling a happy tune. Oh, hello, Lil. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun's shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Who are you? Hey! Nice to see you again. I don't know. You do. I have no idea who you are, but what's up? I'm just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking to help each other out. The GLA sounds like it's thriving. It sure is. Okay. Well, let's trust you, we I guess. We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without anyone knowing. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. Confiscate or return? I don't know. I guess I'll return it to you. You should take these to the Queen. I'm on my way there now. Wait, I didn't accept you yet. Hold on, let me see something, everybody. Let me see something. Let's go with some truth spray. I want to hear the truth. I'm a bit worried about my pal Gary. I think the stress of trying to impress his new professor, Tyronius, has got him down. He's been so reclusive lately, studying late into the night, and I don't know, he's become distant. What the fuck? I don't care about those thoughts. How about one more thing? For I've the homie seen DJ the GLA plans. I'll save the crystal. Oh, okay, my bad. What about the There's decoder nothing ring? here to decode. What about those plants? Hmm, one more thing, everybody. One more thing. I don't want to admit somebody under the wrong circumstances, and then I get less than 2.5 stars. So, let's see. Um, should I call Stryker? Should I give Stryker a little call? A little call on the telly? Maybe hit Those her celly? tunnel plans to increase our food supplies are exactly the kind of outside-the-box thinking we need. Let him in. Hell yeah. The city's best and brightest will go over the map, and construction will begin in no time. We have food! We have food! <laughs> uh, well done, Garthman. I did my due diligence, so there you go. Enjoy your stay inside of the sprawl. Watch your step, and have a good time now. Lil, it is always a pleasure. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Do you really mean that? Yes. I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. I'm not gonna lie. Who the fuck is Julian? The tunnel plans are underway. Soon there will be more food for the people of the sprawl. Well done. You're welcome. That's all I have to say. Anytime somebody puts a piece of chicken in their mouth, you're welcome. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... Thanks. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it, Cecil. I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I'm actually not sure I do know where to find you. Oh, well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess... Sorry, Queen Desdemona. So is that one goblin the king now? After you finished your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Why? Why does Her Majesty want to see me? What did I do? She's meeting with some high-ranking member of the Mage's Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the Guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Well, she can count on me. I hope. I hope so, too. The fate of the Sprawl may rest in your hands. It always does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you write your dad, tell him we all wish him well. I will. Mind your business! I will, I will. I will. I know he'd love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. That's crazy, everybody. The fate of the sprawl, the fate of a freaking kingdom rests in the hands of a 12-year-old girl. A familiar group of black-clad folk approach the shed, weeping and moaning. God damn, with the moaning, though. Like, how loud are these moans? You must help us, child! We have been left without shelter. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen. 
All right. Well, we might not have enough food, but I feel bad the for Duchy you three. The Duchy of Scarborough has been under constant siege for the majority of the war. Okay, so these are the douches of Scarborough, this and they don't have bastard. sprinkles. That was the only thing that kept me from not hating you guys was sprinkles. Quite. We finally had to flee. We couldn't stand it any longer. We've been without food for days. Yes, everyone is rather hungry. Oi. Okay. Um, I mean, I trust you. I'm so you. sorry to hear that you've had to flee your home. I can't imagine how hard that must have been. Thank you, child. I'm a duchess without a duchy. Without a duchy. <laughs> we have rather a lot of refugees Why is that, a funny that word, need duchy? your help and your food desperately. Hmm. Well, we don't have enough food. Okay? And it specifically says here that we need food ourselves. Where was it? Any individuals or groups coming from outside the sprawl who will burden our meager food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with one item, the decision to admit anyone who fits the description should be run by either Ash or me. Okay, let me Ash her if these people can come. These douches. Because I just want to know. My heart just breaks for the dear Duchess and the people of Scarborough. While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. You may let them in. Thank you, but Ash. with groups like this, do make sure criminals aren't infiltrating the sprawl hiding in plain sight. It's the oldest spy trick in the book. Throw on a cloak, jump from a certainly fatal height into a hay bale, that kind of thing. If things were different, we'd give you time to interview them individually. But they're not, so do your best and don't mess up. Ta! What does that mean? Should I truth spray that ass? I might have to. Here we go. I still miss my beloved Sprinkles. Boo hoo! <laughs> Sprinkles! I've been doing my best not to fantasize about poisoning my employer lately. Whoa! Must not confess. Crimes must resist child's powerful spray. Ah! Uh. Excuse me, what? All right, all right, I did it. I lowered the bridge and let those... Bastards? Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. <laughs> he begins to sob. Oh, save your sob story for somebody that gives a shit. Oh, you sneak. You are hereby banished from the court of Scarborough. Scarborough. Prince Phineas was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the kingdom of Petrard. Oh, go away. Well, so well he's spotted, a criminal and he's gone. You. Hell yeah. Listen, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing and my thing. And that's how you truth spray your way to success. Oops. Oh, sorry, Excellent I'm back, I'm back. Line, but that was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. I'm going to let them in. We already weeded out the criminal, and now we are letting in two douches, and they are just going to eat our food. And they're going to think about sprinkles. And they're going to moan very loudly. Yes, you did, child. Especially this old lady. I know she has some old lady moans. Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us. <laughs> Stop crying, damn. Making me want to change my mind. You're so freaking annoying crying all the goddamn time. You did the right thing in a previous turn. You unmasked a traitor and you were kind to refugees. Four star. If I get anything less than three for my final score, I'm punching the monitor. I'm punching this dude in the Where face. I'm kidding. I He's big as shit. You're there. Here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. Bosco. Blowing out the backs, Bosco. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way and... I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. Yeah, he said he's going to whoop your freaking ass and he's going to pull your ponytail, Bosco. Okay, I need to calm down. I need to have the most unbiased opinion. Obviously, we have to let this guy through because he is the last person of the day and I haven't sent anybody into the army. So let me talk You're to this dude. just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Houlihan. 
Okay, Bosco Houlihan. And last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. Great, thanks. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. I don't understand. Who is the bad guy here? What should I do? What should I do? Um, maybe just let him through? Because fuck this guy? Let me call Stryker. I value her opinion heavily. Yes, we need all the help we can get out there. But I can't justify taking any more emotionally conflicted soldiers onto the battlefield. If he's gonna get distracted fighting alongside someone he has unrequited feelings for, I'd shoot. You know what? Elmer's not there. So I could just let him go. I can let him through. Even if we didn't properly vet him, I think this is the right choice. To send him into the draft, my lord. Listen, Buster. We need you. My name is Bosco. I know. But... Listen, Bosco. We need you. Okay, good. Look out, Elmer John. I'm coming to smash her head like a jug. Yeah, go get him. If he's there. Honestly, I forget what I did with him. Yeah, just pretend everybody is Buster. I mean, not Buster. What's his name? Elmer. What did we get, everybody? What did we get? Whoa! Due to your exceptional job performance, 4.0... You were paid 30 gold for this ship. I can't believe we got a 4.0. That's like a perfect GPA, right? I should tell my mom. True love conquers all. Way to go, Cupid. The tunnel plans are underway. Oh yeah! Damn, we did that! Woo! I told you all. I don't play around. You achieved a perfect four-star average in level eight. Yeah, you know, this is what I do. Something light. Something nice and easy. Come on. But let's see what the queen has to say. And the goblin dude is there. Which is exactly so he is the king, why right? we must start using them immediately. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. A luxury we can ill afford. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. You know Tyronius of Thanatos, I believe. I've had the pleasure, I guess. Isn't he kind of yes, snaky? Yes, I remember this little guardsman. I don't know if we can trust him, right? But I don't and know. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? I don't know if I can trust her either. I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. She put a time machine on me, and I didn't yes, even I, ask I mean, for it. It's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. Mm. I might have known. Okay, so it's not a secret then. Everybody knows about it. Wait, Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. We don't know that. It's still too early. How long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. It's starting <laughs> to sound weird. They want all the crystals. Access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. Weren't they trying to overthrow the kingdom and take over? In the beginning the good of the game, could simply give us the blueprints, or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. Doctor Beatrix mm. feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. Yeah, I don't know if I trust the this Mages guy. Guild is and always has been reckless. There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> we both knew what this was. Well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? I mean, we literally just saw the devil before your wedding. I don't know if that was a bad omen, but the wedding was completely fucked. It was a pure shit show. So I think the devil foreshadowed what was going to happen, right? 
Not do it. I don't know. It's too dangerous. They are way too dangerous. I use the chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? Spoken like a scientist. Do you have a master's degree? How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. <laughs> Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the Mage's Guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. Bro is so mad right now. Then at least allow the Guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. How about fuck no? For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being? My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. What happened to the father? I guess we're supposed to talk to everybody? Okay, yeah. Alright, let's talk to Queen Desdemona. Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. You better be, because I didn't ask for this shit. What about you? I'm just here to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. Good man. It's an important decision. And I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good What? Did the game just crash? No. And did my voice just crack? Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mum's club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. Hopefully your words will not sway Desdemona on future matters. What is this dude talking about? I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now. Okay. What's this? This looks just like the machine at the dig site. Wonder if it's got any good games on it? Yeah, wonder if it could run games at like 120 frames per second. What about you? Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. Appreciate it. Thanks. No shit. Why are we being mean to this guy? Thanks. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. What? Malcolm? Bro, Malcolm is the shadiest dude in this game so far. Probably mad that the old guy and the goblin dude are like in love or some shit. Because that was his new assistant. Maybe he's gonna force me to What be I don't assistant. understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Hmm without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste and fashion. Or a lousy court jester. Ooh. Yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join said quorum, but she was. And she is here. Yeah, haters alert. What? She is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. God damn. At least we know his asshole's tight. Ah, Lil, you're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the Queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. I shouldn't say. I think if they wanted you to know what they talked about at the meeting, they would have invited you. Ooh. She won't tell us anything. She's as useless as you two are. Ooh. I take offense to that. Ooh, I'm kidding. Offense to what? Sorry, I got distracted. Can I go now? You're dismissed. That is kind of interesting how those three weren't invited. Like, their opinion matters when I'm trying to decide if I'm going to let people inside the kingdom or not. But for some reason, the queen doesn't trust them enough to go to the meeting. So I'm like, are they good guys? Are they bad guys? I don't get it. But let me go to Garby shop real quick. Because since we got that four-star rating, we got that coin, baby. We got that cash for that ass. So I'm going to try to upgrade my stuff. I want that oak arena right there. Like, I want to get my link on. I want to get my Garby's Zelda. Welcome to Emporium of Wonder. The Emporium of Wonder. I wouldn't have if I didn't hide a few away from my... Okay, okay. Come here. You... Well, hey. 
I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. And I'll sell it to you for just four gold. A flamethrower? Sure. Okay, I guess we bought back the flamethrower for a very good deal. We got some thrift store deals. But let's see. Um, let's go with x-ray. And one more decoder ring. And then, you know, all jokes aside, I don't really need to use the whip that much. But, yeah, we got a flamethrower, everybody. So, that's cute, I guess. Lil, how goes the Battle of the Southern Gate? Same old. How are things around here holding up? Great. Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. <laughs> that's good? You bet it is. If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. Then we can get rid of the rats. We don't have rats. I mean, we do, but technically they have us. I kind of like the rats. It gives this place like a sort of charm. Turns out they New own York the building charm. and we just rent from them. But if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. You gotta be shitting on my chest, dude. The rats are the landlords? I could do without all the hissing. Who's running shit, Master Splinter? Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. How did that rem... Never mind. A letter? From who? From Hamish. A letter from Dad? Gimme! That's some real wartime shit, writing letters. Hey, Sweet Pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. <laughs> That's so sad. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. Aw. That was actually sweet. That's a sweet letter. Love you too, Dad. Can we write him back? Well, what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's easily distracted. That's oh, exactly boy. how I overthink, Neither too. answer seems right. Are you talking to me? No. Positive. Let's let's be let's be um oh crap. Uh let's be positive. Positive reinforcement. Lil will write a letter that suggests everything is going great in order to make her father feel better. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Let's be honest. Lil will write a letter that expresses her honest feelings about how difficult things are for her. Are you sure? As long as she says that she misses her dad, which is her honest feelings, then yes. I think that's what we need to do. Hopefully that doesn't have like a bad effect on the dad or something. Because he is a good guy. He's a good dad. There. That should do it. Hey, Arda. Mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Sure thing, Lil. Yeah. I wanted to be honest because the dad was honest with us in his letter. And I think that he at least deserves that much. Who's that again? The goblin well, ball guy? Well, if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. My former legitimate place of business, that is. Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. <laughs> Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. Uh, sounds about right. How much does he owe you? 30 gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Sorry, I don't have that kind of money on me. Either come back tomorrow and I'll see if I have the money, or wait for Hamish to come back from the war. Eh, both those options sound lousy. Tell you what, let's forget the debt altogether. But tell Hamish I ain't taking any more of his markers. See you around. Hey, at least he was kind of cool with it. I thought he was going to pull out a gun or something and be like, You better give me that 30 gold tonight, Shh, or else. I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. What's up with these dudes just trying to steal shit? How are you planning to do that? Badass kids, I man. If I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Just like your tooth, where's your parents at? Solid plan. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So we are going to do one more level in today's episode because I'm feeling it. I think it. I've done everything I need to do. 
but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay? I'm so ready. I'm so ready to hit the hay. That's what I say. I love reading these little summaries because I feel like it just adds a nice touch to this game. But some of them are long as shit, though. Reunited with his darling whelp, Grumpkin T. Dankworth was a changed man. Together, the two traveled through Kaladar, sailed Lake Inez, and even summered in Fireball Canyon. He laughed as he had never laughed in all his days, and their nights were filled with food and wine, music and love. See, I told you this shit is long as fuck! They ran, holding hands, through fields of flowers. On one such sprint, Grumpkin clutched at his chest, his heart had overflowed. More accurately, he suffered a massive heart attack. Try as he might to revive his former master and now true love, Welp was unable to resuscitate the old man. A simple funeral was held and the widower Welp counted himself lucky to ever had such a love as this. As for his substantial riches, they were held by Mr. Dung, head of BS until such a time as Mr. Dankworth's will was read. The old man had donated the entirety of his fortune to the GLA. A small flower garden was built in his honor outside of their headquarters. So that guy wasn't such a bad guy after all. Thanks to his timely arrival back in the sprawl, Julian was able to prepare a lavish birthday party for his best friend Gary. Every goblin, troll, halfling, cyclops, and mole person who was anyone was there. It was a bright spot in what had otherwise been a dark few months for the sprawl. As a birthday present, Julian gave Gary a pure, unrefined power crystal that he received from the visiting miners. The glint of its unearthly glow reflected in Gary's eyes as he inserted the powerful crystal into his practice wand. He thanked Julian profusely for this most precious present. It never left his sight from that day on. The next day, Julian presented the plans he was carrying to the city council. These plans detailed an extensive tunnel system to be dug underneath the walls of the sprawl, which would allow food to be secretly and safely moved into the sprawl right under the enemy's nose. After a short period of deliberation, the council realized just how hungry they all were and unanimously approved the plan. Someone will be arriving to start digging the tunnel system soon, but it's all on the up and up and pretty hush hush. With new plans for bringing food into the city, working their way through the bureaucracy of the sprawl, there were enough rations for the refugees from Scarborough to eat and a space was made for them at the refugee camp springing up down at the docks. The Duchess was not impressed by her new surroundings, but to be honest, she's a very difficult person to please. I don't give a shit. Swift justice was visited upon the traitor who lowered the drawbridge of Castle Scarborough in the middle of the night, allowing the enemy to enter and take control of the duchy. The villain was hanged in the town square. Brutal, certainly, but this is war, and it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus, it made for a fine day's entertainment, as there are no video games in the sprawl to keep people amused. No video games in the sprawl? That's a fate worse than hell. Well, we completed level 8, everybody, and we did good. What is going on? Oh, shoot. Uh, I think we're dead. Oh, God. Please, please. Yes! We did it! Fuck you! The Sprawl's victorious, baby! The garrison stationed at the Sprawl Secret Western Food Depot successfully repelled the invading Petrardian forces. The Sprawl's reserved food stores are safe from the enemy's greedy hands and empty stomachs. Bosco's repressed feelings and lifetime of compensating at the gym led him to fight impressively on the battlefield, inspiring all around him. Elmer John went home and talked things over with Glorianne. They called the engagement back on and got married soon after. Aww, how sweet. Okay, so everybody got a summary. But now it's time for level 9, everybody. And I saw in the comments Leading somebody to the told me to make sure I listen to all the radio stuff, so let me sh- With a pointless bloodshed, go. sure to scar the psyche of all those involved for years to come. Haunting words from one of the survivors of last night's charity bake sale at the Garden District's Haven for the Elderly. And now, news from the war. The battle for the Western Food Reserve Grotto was successful. That is the only detail I have to report. And now, more exclusive audio from what has been dubbed the Goodies for Geezers Bake Sale Goodies Massacre. for Geezers? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound even gooder. It's my banana bread. I would do some nasty things what for banana that? bread. Speak up. The sound of a tank bursting through the wall. I wish my grandson was here. 
God damn, okay. Jeez, enough is enough. It's my banana bread. Oh, okay, okay. So, no note today. Oh, but there's a letter. Hey, a letter arrived from dad. Yes. All right, let's see what dad said. Dear Lil, thanks for writing me back, but your sorry, letter concerned I'm me. I'm sorry to hear that you and everyone aren't doing so well. Worrying about you kept me up all night. I didn't get a wink of oh, sleep. Oh, no. And the next day at roll call, when they were asking if anyone was a mechanic, I yawned and stretched and they thought I was volunteering. So now I'm stuck with mechanic duty for the next big battle. They say this time it'll be fought in the air, and it's my job to help repair the planes. Don't tell anyone, but I really don't know what I'm doing. Oh, come but my on. my grandfather was a master mechanic, and I'll always remember the words he said to me when I went to visit him as a kid. What the hell are you doing here, kid? Get out of here! Okay, you see, I'm trying to look for things to fix so I don't have to spend time with your grandmother. So I guess if I investigate each aircraft that comes my way, I'm sure I'll find something to fix. And then I'll help win the battle. Thanks, Granddad. That goes for you, too. If you draft any would-be airmen, make sure there isn't anything on their end that needs fixing first. Anyways, I better go. Drop me a line again, will ya? But this time, maybe don't write such bad news. If I accidentally volunteer for something I'm not trained for again, who knows what'll happen? That's my bad, that's sincerely, my bad. Sincerely, Dad. Bro wrote sincerely like that? That old-timey writing is wild. That education system in the old days is crazy. But it's weird because I feel like this game is like a mix of future, present, and past. Okay, everybody, I know I just said that I am going to do the next level in today's episode, but something came up and I have to end this episode right now, but I will upload the next part as soon as possible. So if you all enjoyed this and can't wait for the next part, make sure you give this video one big fat like and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!